Do you have questions on your financial strategies for your business or your family? It is tough sometimes to process all the information and the noise out there when it comes to taxes, retirement plans, college planning for your children, investing in uncertain times, and protecting you and your loved ones with the right insurance. Diamond State Financial Group specializes in working with individuals and helping them simplify their comprehensive financial picture. They go beyond the basics and help clients like myself look at their current financial position, their dreams, their goals, and the lives that they would like to live and help them plan to achieve all that they would like to achieve in life. They also consult with business owners like myself to help them think through many of the same strategies as well as provide comprehensive business consulting engagements to help them maximize the value of the hard work they put in to build their business. One of the primary sources of stress in our lives is questions about money. Consider a conversation with an advisor to see if it makes sense to let them help you through it. Call Greg Carroll to set up a complimentary no obligation conversation at 302-366-0366 or you could even text questions to 302-956-9878. Securities offered through Satera Advisor Networks, LLC, member FINRA-SIPC, advisory services offered through Satera Investment Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Satera is under separate ownership from any other named entity. Hello, friends. Welcome to Level Up with Debbie Neal. I am your host. There is nowhere I would rather be than right here, right now with you. This podcast is all about leveling up in all aspects of our lives. Thank you for being here. I am so grateful. I'm excited to be on this journey with you. Together, we are leveling up. You ready? You guys, happy Monday or whatever day you're listening to this podcast. I am so excited to spend some time with the Level Up family today and really talk about an experience, an experience that broke my heart and filled my heart all at the same time. For those of you that follow me on social media, I just came back from the Dominican Republic working with an organization called Mission of Hope. And we were working with refugees from Haiti. And this was my first experience of any sort of a mission vision trip. And it was extremely humbling. It was heartbreaking. It was humbling. There were so many things um, wrapped in one. And we're going we're gonna to talk about some of the, I don't know, aha moments, but just things that like really take, taking, take away that, that my heart left with. I'm here today with a guest. I'm also here today with a friend. A friend... You know, they say to surround yourself with people that inspire you to be more. So Miranda Bertram is a friend of mine. She's also in my company. So that means she's in my industry. She's a top leader in my company, but she's she's a visionary and she's passionate. And when she is set on something, she's one of those people that I love to get a voice text from her and I dread getting a voice text from her because I always know she wants something, but she doesn't want something for her. She wants something for somebody else and she'll she'll call on my greatness and she'll call on my influence and she will ask boldly and she will not take no for an answer. And I'd like to think that most of the time that she gets a yes from me, but I have to be very transparent that sometimes I'm like, oh, what, what? And, and sometimes you can't understand the significance of the ask until you experience things firsthand. And so we're going to talk about that today. But as you're listening today, you could think, oh, you know, I don't I don't know if that applies to me. I don't know if that's where I am in my life. Most of you are network marketers, not all of you, but most of you are network marketers or you're entrepreneurs and you're people that generally want to level up in every single area of your life. You're you're here to learn and expand and to grow. And so we've talked about this very often, but how you do anything is how you do everything. You don't need to earn a million dollars a year to be generous. You don't have to be at the top of an industry 
to be loving and caring. And you don't have to be, you know, necessarily like the leader that you desire to be without having so much humility and really learning. And so when you hear things like this, it's like, wow, I think my business is hard. This is hard. Sometimes we just need a a perspective, a fresh perspective. Sometimes we think picking up the phone is uncomfortable, but you, you get redefined on what actually the definition of really being uncomfortable is. We have a very privileged life. I live in the United States of America. It's a privileged life. And so I'm excited. I hate to use the word excited because excited sounds really ridiculous after um, the three days of, of what I experienced, but to shed a little bit of that with you, to share a little bit with you, but then to call on your greatness to see how you can make a difference in this world because we do rise by lifting others. And so before we even get started today, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm really, I was going to say I'm going to introduce Miranda. I'm not really, we're so used to in our business and our industry, giving all the accolades for that. That's, that's not what today is about at all. So I really, I'm, I'm excited for you to learn today from a friend, a great human, somebody who lives, she inspires me um, especially when it comes to my faith. And we've talked about faith in some of my pa- my past podcasts, and it's been a journey for me. And I am I am so blessed and I am so grateful. And I am a I am a Christian. And every single day, everything we do, I believe with every ounce of my being, it's because we're here to serve Jesus and we're here to live our best life and and to obviously we end up in heaven if that's our belief, but to bring as many people with us, but make a difference here in this world. And so Miranda inspires me to just listening to the way she prayed, the way she lifts others. And it's it's amazing because even there was a lesson there because I'm like, I think all these things, but she expresses them better than me. That's an area for me to learn, to really say these things out loud, to pray out loud boldly over people, not just in in private. And you know, and that could be you in your business. Maybe you're, you know, you think you're really loud and proud with your business, but are you speaking it over people? Are you casting vision over people? Are you doing all these things? So for this, these three days we went to serve, we went to learn, and I'm certainly not going to pretend to know all of it. I know very, very little, but there were so many life lessons. And so Miranda, I'm really, really happy you're here today. And I'd love for our audience to know a little bit about you, a little bit about, you know, I don't want to say the the short version, but we could be here for four days talking about the importance, but really how this came to be and what what was it that we were there, especially because we were in the Dominican Republic, not Haiti. So a little bit of facts that we could share with people. Sure. Well, so excited. Thank you, Debbie, for who you are and the platform that you've built and the value that you add to other people. That's why people listen to your podcast, because not only do you add value, but you have the reputation because you've walked it. And so we always say your walk talks and your talk talks, but your walk talks louder than your talk talks. And so although you're a great, eloquent speaker, your walk has gone before you and it's it's gone alongside of you and it's who you are. And that's why you have the credibility for people to turn on your podcast every week because you're living that. And so congratulations um, to you for that. And I'm proud of you. Um, and I know that you add so much value to people's lives every single day. And you sure did to ours when we were on that um, trip together and you do to our industry, you do to our company. And so thank you for leveling up every day yourself and then and challenging everybody else to do the same. And so um, I've been in this industry for 20 years, same company as Debbie, and I'm so grateful for that. And it's really allowed me to, um, I've always known there's more to life, right? I think we all know there's more to life and like living day to day, the average life, but most of us don't know how to get it. And because of now network marketing industry, many of us do know how to get it. And we're so excited and grateful, but because of the industry that I'm in, I've been able to do more and be more and give more. Um, and that's what lights me up. And I feel like it's really actually what lights everybody up, but most people don't know. And so what I'll say is before you start really getting into this podcast, I want you to think, let me have an open mind. Because when I talk to people about this, sometimes they go, well, I'm not called to that. Well, how do you know? How do you know what you're called to unless you've seen it? Unless you've walked in 
our shoes. So I want to challenge you before you say what you're called to, what you're not called to, just to really listen with an open mind and go, maybe I am. And some of you guys already know you are. And you know that when you're, if you want to be great, you serve many. Um, and so today you're excited for this podcast as well as, so, and I am too. But I'll say I started going um, on mission trips years and years ago when my kids were little. I have five children and that's been a big deal for us, my husband and I, to show our kids, not just to tell our kids that there's a great big world that needs um, help, but to show them. And so we've had 18 foster kids through our house. We've adopted twin boys from the foster care system. But when my son was eight years old, I got an opportunity to go to Haiti with him, which people thought I was crazy. I had actually rude messages. It was Facebook back then. How dare you take your son? Um, but they didn't get it and that's okay. But I went to the Mission of Hope in Haiti and I cried the whole week because I thought this is so terrible, but what? who am I to help? I'm just one person, how can I help? And I actually left with that attitude going, I probably will never come back because what can I do? But what I started understanding pretty quickly as I did go back um, was that one person and a group of people can actually change the world. In fact, never underestimate what a small group of people can do to change the world. It's actually the only thing that ever has. Margaret Mead said that, and it's such a powerful quote. And so working with Mission of Hope has been just a privilege because they are visionaries. They've been serving in Haiti for 26 years. Um, I just recently got back six weeks ago from a mission trip there with a group of friends, and we learned um, of the true chaos and despair that's happening um, in Haiti right now. We can't go to Haiti. 85% of the country is taken over by gangs. It is um, the most terrible situation they've had in decades upon decades. And so Mission Hope has moved their actual ministry um, building to Dominican Republic. But as we gathered with a group of people there several weeks ago, I asked the question, what more can I do? You know, Debbie, it's so interesting because a lot of us mumble those words every day, and, but we say it like this. I mean, what more can I do? That's one way to say it. That's a really hopeless way. What more can I do? I I'm, I'm already have kids. I've already got a job. I've already got this. Or you can say that phrase like this. What more can I do? That's, that's a more of an abundant, hands-open mentality. What more can I do? A closed fist mentality says, well, what more can I do? And so we asked that question with an open hand, what more can we do? And we found out that the people in Haiti are literally starving at an all-time high. Eight out of 10 people in Haiti right now are literally in starvation mode. They have no clue where the next meal is coming from. And what's crazy is only 5% of food is available in Haiti to the Haitian people. So 95% has to be brought in. There's many reasons for that. And so we found out that there are there is a lot of packed food ready to be sent to Haiti through mana packs, rice and beans, where they can just add some water and some oil and make a complete uh, protein for their family and sustain their life. But the problem is it's sitting in warehouses in the U.S., how can that be? There's no budget to get it there. And so there's 40 containers that need to be taken over from the U.S. all the way down to the port, across the ocean, to the island of Haiti. And it's $25,000 per container. That's actually amazing to be able to do all that they're doing. They have 300 staff on the ground that are distributing the food under dire conditions. And so that is almost 11 million meals. And if you do the math, 40 containers times 25,000, it's a million dollars. But it's interesting when um, my friend that works for Mission Hope told me that, million dollars all of a sudden didn't seem so big to me because there's a verse in the Bible that says many hands can make light work. And immediately I knew I had many hands that I could rally together. And many of you are those hands that you don't even, you don't even know the impact you can make yet. And so my friend said, how many containers would your group want to take? And I texted him back, hang on, let me find out. And I talked to the group and we agreed 40. We'll be responsible for all 40. I text him back, we'll take all of them. And he said, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> and so here we are, six weeks on our journey, and we have filled many containers. We have many more to go. And um, that's kind of how this project started six weeks ago. It's so powerful, and it's really heavy. And so when I went over there, you know, we, we went now a group of 10 people. So I just came back with Miranda, who who led this particular group, and I want to. I've always been very transparent with all of you, and so uh, there were some people that were an immediate yes. I wasn't an immediate yes. I had to think about it. I had to pray about it, and I, of course, again with some of Miranda's phone calls, I ended up being a yes, and I went. And I know that God had a really big plan for bringing the particular group that went over there, and. We got to spend time 
with these children. We got to go to different villages and spend time with these children. I saw children, and, and you know how we say in our industry, like we can't bring a conference back. You can't bring this back. You can't, I can, there can never be enough pictures that can describe the feeling that we had from being there. There, ca- there can't be videos, there can't be words because it's something that touches your heart on such a deep level. And so we saw children that had been burned or had they're starving, but so happy. Happy, not because they're not, they're desperate, but there was people there that were showing them attention and love. And there was there was the one particular day we got there and it was like really hot and we were traveling. And I remember carrying this little boy up uphill. Like I didn't realize how out of shape I was till I carried this little boy uphill in the heat and just putting him down from time to time to take a breather. It was like, no, pick me up. Like I need you. I need you. And so that whole experience just made, made us realize that the world needs us. Like we have a greater calling than just succeeding. We have a greater calling than just reaching ranks in our business or income levels in our business. And we we talk about this. I talk about this all the time, like having a why that makes you cry, having a why that makes you cry. And my initial why for starting my business, my friends, very transparent, was my family, my income. How can how can we make a difference in our lives? I didn't understand the magnitude of this business. And then my why has have expanded over the last 18 years. But we want to invite you in on this journey with us. We want to invite you in. So of course you're thinking about like, they're going to be looking for donations. Yeah, we are. Okay. But I want, just like Miranda said at the beginning, we all have a servant heart. And if you want to be in this industry, you need to have a servant heart because that's part of leadership. Like we serve, we make a difference, we give, we make sacrifices. It's all connected to success. And so make no bones. I'm saying if you do this, you'll get that. But having that abundant mindset versus the scarcity mindset, having that leadership to say, yes, I'll go, or yes, I want to learn about this. And yes, I know that I can make a difference. I know there are many people now pushing for this goal and that the million dollar goal can be set. And one of the things that we're going to talk about in this podcast is money. So of course, we're we're going to be there prepared to make donations. But how can this podcast, how can it be a win-win for everyone? Okay. How can it be that we can help children eat and also level up our business, right? What what value can I bring other than my finances? Because I, I do have finances and that's great, but we're, we're looking to make a bigger impact than just my finances and Miranda's finances and the 10 people were there. And so we're going to be talking about it as we get closer, but Maybe it's, it's well, what we know it is, is we're going to do it in separate things, but like a group coaching call, maybe a team coaching call, and then we're going to have something bigger that maybe you could decide. We could talk back and forth of what that looks like, because there's some of you listening to this that have really big organizations, and you can rally, and you can fundraise, and you can make calls, you can all make donations, and then we can take our relationship and leveling up to an absolutely whole new level because we think what we do is hard sometimes, but again, being there just gave a whole new perspective on hard, right? We have the ability, every single one of us has the ability to make an impact in this world. Every single, every day, you know, I'll tell you, money is going to help them gigantically. Food, water, shelter. There are the three basic things, food, water, shelter, food, water, shelter, not vacations, not cars. And I'm certainly not here preaching to all of you guys because I love my vacations. Every time I get in my car, I feel so grateful. Okay. Especially because the car that I drive, it was earned in my, in my business, but food, water, shelter. We're talking about the basic things so people can survive. And I know there's also probably a lot of you thinking that's right here in our backyards. And let me tell you something, this mission is not the only thing that I'm going to be giving to. So I give to my church, Miranda gives to her church, we give to other things, but we are talking about this specific thing for a minute because it's a big goal and it's actually literally saving lives. I mean, Miranda was, they were talking about a story about, you know, this little girl that a a plane came in, literally, she was moments away 
from from death. So this whole thing is just how to make a real big difference. And one of the things that we talk about in our business, I'm going to turn over to Miranda because she spoke about this so well the other day, is the power of a big ask. You know, we talk about in our business, like a lot of questions I get is like, do you talk about the business first? Do you talk about the products first? You know, sometimes we tiptoe through the tulips and we think we're building this business big, but we're not asking boldly. We're not asking courageously. And that's not how you make a significant difference in your industry. That's not how you make a significant difference in your life. And it's the same thing in this. It's it's the big, big ass. It's, it's really giving you guys a glimpse of some of the things that we saw and how we together can really, really make that difference. For sure. And so how you do anything is how you do everything. Debbie said it starting this podcast. And so I don't know how to ask small. If people want to give whatever they can, I'm grateful for it. Don't get me wrong. Um, We're grateful for everything. However, I've seen that, that big asks in my business have created amazing success in my business. And so that's how I've approached this race to 11 million meals. I've asked people for big, here's the thing, you guys, people are relying on our extra. People that we'll never meet in the side of heaven are relying on us to level up for us to be our very best. And so I'm not embarrassed about the ask. I'm not worried about what people are going to think of me in my business or in this mission because it's bigger than me. And when you realize things in your life are bigger than you, you don't make it about you. And so if people ignore me or they say no, that's okay. They didn't get it. It wasn't for them. I'm not going to let that hurt my feelings. I'm moving on. And so I'll tell you, I don't ask, just give up your coffee money. Yeah, I'm coffee money. We'll take it. We'll take anything. But this is so much bigger. This is about saving lives. This is about bringing hope. This is about bringing love. This is about bringing so many things to people that if we don't bring it, they're not going to get it. We're saving lives. And so when I call and ask for things, the, the first ask that I have is, will you donate? Will you donate your best gift? Will you give out of your, not just your abundance, like, hey, I have some extra money, I'll give it. But will you give out of your sacrifice? I think about the widow's might. Like the, the in the Bible, there's a story about a lady that had nothing and she dropped it in what she had. And that was so valuable. Giving above and beyond what just isn't easy for us, but giving something that hurts. So if I was working in my business, I might be recruiting Debbie and I'm going to give her a big ask. I'm going to say, Debbie, I would love for you to look at what I'm doing. You have been on my list of prospects. And you know what? I haven't asked you soon enough, so I'm so glad you answered. You're incredible. You are such a leader. You are such an influencer. You're a person of your word. You do what you say you're going to do. And when you show up in a room, the room is better. I would love for you to look at what I'm doing because we could do something really special to do, special together. And I'm telling you what, here's why I'm building my business. Here's how you can add value. And here's what we could do together. Would you look at it? You'd, you'd actually be making a mistake if you don't at least look. Are you asking people like that for what you're doing? If you're not asking people like that, then don't expect big results without big asks. Same thing with this, you guys. I'm asking people to do something big. I'm painting the big picture of what the reality is in Haiti right now. And I'm asking them, hey, will you donate? Will you give your best gift? In fact, there's some people out there that I'm asking, not only will you donate, you have such influence, you have such character that people want to do what you're doing. I want to ask you, will you rally together and help me raise funds? Maybe it's helping me raise for one container. My big ask that I ask a lot of people and I ask Debbie, will you Will you do a container? Not only will you donate, but will you be responsible with your community, with your circle of influence, with the people that love and know you and that trust you and not me? Will you fill a container? What's so incredible, we've had people that have said, yes, they've never been to Haiti with us. They don't understand the need like like I do. So whenever you're leveling up in your life and you're asking for big things, it's so important to paint the picture of what the reality is. Because we don't remember what people say, we remember how it makes us feel. And and recently when we were um, in the Dominican Republic, we had the privilege of having the founder's wife, she's the founder too, with us. And she is so incredible. She's a huge mentor and friend in my life. And she sat with us and shared the reality of what's happening because we can't walk the streets of Haiti right now. She's been in Haiti 26 years and can tell us the reality. And so one thing she described is that these moms, they go to desperate means to feed their children. Um, And anything you could think of as desperate, that's what they're trying to do. And she described because there's such a lack of food that they will literally scrape the ground with clay, dirt, mud, however they can gather enough um, to make a little patty, like a little cookie. 
and they add anything they have to it. Maybe it's a little salt. If they're lucky, maybe a little sugar. She said ginger is a delicacy, but that helps the cookie not be so hard to get down. They pat it, they make it, they put it out in the sun to bake it. Those are sold right now in the markets in Haiti. The mamas are making those for their kids. They're dirt cookies. Is there any nutritional value? Zero. Does it taste good? No. Does it, does it kill their hunger pangs for a, a little bit? Yes. And as she described the way that these kids are eating these cookies and keeping their belly full, to be able to have a mama that goes, my, my baby's crying, my, little, my child's crying, I'll feed them this cookie and that way they can at least sleep so their stomach's not waking them up. Um, that hits home. And so maybe I, I tell it, I share a story like that, or I share the reality with, with detail, with emotion, because that's the reality. I'm not trying to pull heartstrings. I'm trying to tell you what's happening, and it, it automatically pulls your heartstrings because we're people that want to be compassionate and help others. And then I ask, I ask, here's what I'm asking you to do. With Debbie, can you give? Can, can you take a container? Can you rally your group? She already wanted to do that, but it's asking, can you, can you donate time at your home for people to level up? Can you go with us to the Dominican Republic? Can you come on a vision trip and see? If you don't ask big, you're not going to get big in any area of your life. And so today we're coming with some big asks and believing that we're going to have a group here that's listening, that's going to help push this forward. We are. And so here's some of the things that I was thinking. And you know what? You guys might even have like other suggestions. And just like Miranda said, like you might be like, I, I have enough influence. I can do this. We can, can take a container. And so one of the things, first of all, we're not asking for coffee money, but at the same time, every single thing does make a difference. It does make a difference. And so if you're, we're going to put a link in the show notes, right? We're going to put a link in the show notes. One of the questions that I get very often, and I feel very humbled by it is, do you do separate coaching calls? And, and I don't. And the reason why I don't is because I am a coach, but I'm a coach because I'm a top leader in a network marketing company and I coach my team. And I also, I mean, I'm always doing things. You listening to this podcast is a form of coaching, but I do not have a coaching business. I don't coach on the side. I don't charge by the hour. Um, yeah, but for that, this is a donation. And so hundred dollars or more, I'm going to do a group coaching call and you can spend some time and we get to see each other face to face because you're listening to an audio and you don't really know me on that level. If you have a bigger level of influence and you can create you and your team 2,500, and you guys, let's think about this. Number one, asking for donations. And we could talk, again, it's all part of growing. And one of the things we're going to close with is some of the lessons that how something like this of giving and serving others will make a difference in your business. It will make a difference because you're growing your abundance, you're growing your mindset, you're growing your ask, you're growing your leadership, you're growing your why, you're growing your heart. And we don't do to get, okay? You're not going to do this because, oh my gosh, if Debbie Neal tells me to do this and Miranda Bertram tells me to do this, my business is going to grow. But how you do anything is how you do everything, right? So if you could do as, as a group 2,500, right? Then, then it's a private coaching call with you and your team, right? So whether you have 10 people on there or you have a thousand people on there, it's an hour, it's a coaching call. And it, a lot of times it could be what you think I want to talk about, but it could be, hey, Q&A, we have questions for Debbie Neal. And I'd be so happy and excited to spend that time with you. And then here's the next level, because we're always going to level up, okay? If you want to do a container, there are some of you that are top leaders out there. A container is 25,000. That And we could talk about what something like that looks like. Again, that's you, that's you raising money. It's in, inviting your leaders in this, inviting your friends in this. I know one of the things that Miranda's asked me to do in the past, and it's gone for a really nice donation in an auction, is people have come to my home and we've spent time. Maybe it would look like something that, you know, you would get me there and you would get my time. And it could be w whatever that looks like where I could learn. I mean, teach your team, spend time with your team, answer questions, whatever. So we're going to like really think about that. But if you want, if you think, you know what, we can rock this by October 1. We can, we can do this container. I'm going to level up with my team. We don't exactly know it, but I'll work with you to what that looks like. You have my word that I'm going to work with you, whether it looks like you bring, you know, in the past we did it, that six leaders came to my home. 
They spend time here. They spent the night here. And we really had some deep and meaningful conversations that we could not accomplish on just one call, right? I've also gone places where, you know, people have, have gotten me there and then my time is is all yours. It's it's whatever you need it to be, however I can serve your team. But if that's the goal you meet, we could work it out to to what we think is best to serve your team. But some of so we're gonna we're gonna get that information to you. The link is going to be in the show notes. We're gonna close with that as well. But w- one of the things that I just want to talk about now is not that we're moving away from this because we're gonna weave it in, but how doing something like this you know, Miranda, how doing some of this, how do you feel this has impacted? Because all of us have different callings. You know, I have a, a I don't want to say a different service calling because this, we all do so many things to serve, but every single time I serve, it it kind of grows my vision. It grows my heart. It changes my perspective. Like it gives me a bigger reason to share my gifts with the world and it removes the temptation to ever chill. Like how dare we chill? Like our industry is not, there are some people like, I'm going to do this and chill. Like I don't do this and chill. Miranda doesn't do this and chill. And that's one of the reasons why we connect on a personal level because if anybody knows anything about me, like I'm 18 years in my business and I continue to work my business because we rise by lifting others. I'm, I'm obsessed with what I do. I love what I do, but I, I, I love that constant evolution of growth, of going on this trip. I went to serve. I went to do whatever they needed, but I left with so much more than I, than I went to offer, if that makes sense. Lessons, aha moments, you know, God winks, God gut punches, like he hit me with a two by four for three days straight. I mean, today, this morning I was praying. I got up today, I read my Bible. I was praying to the point of crying. I asked for a bold sign. You guys, I, so I was making my coffee at my Nespresso and I have like a little coffee nook in when you go from like my kitchen to my dining room. The, the coffee machine is like a good six inches from the edge. And in the middle of my prayer, my coffee in the middle of the coffee coming down, somehow jumped off that counter. I was in the next room and the coffee went everywhere and my mug broke. And I was telling my daughter, Brooke, about this story today. And I w- and she was like, I-, I-, I heard that. And I was like, you know, sometimes God takes time for us to get a message or his timing. And sometimes it's so bold that he throws an entire cup of coffee on the floor. So this this these 3 days really really moved me not only moved me to make a difference but moved me to take bigger actions in my business because we're put on this earth to make a difference to make an impact and to remind us of our greatness so i believe everything we're talking about today is going to make a difference in your life and in your business so i guess some of your thoughts on that miranda like it's obviously mission of hope is the biggest thing here this is big but again, we have listeners like how doing something like this, how, how does that show up in your business? How does that show up? Because it does. I got back about midnight to my house last night. I was up early at the gym talking to people. My phone's died a couple times today. I've been on it so much for this project. But I'm going to ask you guys, do you think that I'm more or less motivated to work my business, to build my influence, to grow my income? I'm more Why? Because the more I have, the more I can do. But I will say this, generosity, it starts with mindset, not with net worth, not with what your check can be, but with what you have now. Here I am, Lord, send me. But do you think I want to grow my business? You bet I do. Let me tell you about a friend that I have in my business that um, was stuck, took her to Haiti. We We didn't mention, really talk about business much, but what happened is she came back and decided to level up. Because she knew more? No. Because her skills were higher? No. Because her heart said, if I can do more in my business, I can give more to this world. If I can increase my level of belief in any area, that means I can do more. And that's what giving does. That's what expanding your mind and leveling up and giving does. It helps you be hungrier and know truly there's more to life and that you're put on this planet to serve. If you're down in your life, if you're down in your business, if you have if your mindset's in the gutter, let me tell you, stop thinking about yourself, get out, 
and stop looking at your own four walls in a great big world that needs you, that needs your impact, that needs your influence, that needs your giving. Because you're made and we are made to do more and be more in this world for people that we'll never probably meet that are going to be impacted by us and our greatness. 100%. So it's the giving piece of it. The giving is huge, but it's the mindset. Like how does like the giving and the generosity and the the willingness to serve change your mindset? Because your mindset will change. And a lot of times... I talk to people and they don't realize they have a victim mentality, but there's this thing called a victim mentality. And none of us are victims. Like you were born to be victorious. You were born to prosper. You were born to, to speak life and hope other people over people, but it's taking that step. And maybe this is a small step for you. Maybe this is something that was so not on your radar, but how, you know, how does the mindset play a piece in this? Well, I think anytime we're focusing on ourself, that um, it's never good. <laughs> it's never good. You know, in a world of selfies and self-care and self, 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 that's never going to be enough. But when you literally take a look at the world, I always say that good families, they take care of each other. But extraordinary families, they look out at a world in need and they start taking care of them. And that shifts, it shifts our mindset. It shifts our purpose. Um Vision is something you know we talk about in our industry all the time. But when you have the vision to do more for the world, then everything else becomes easier because you've expanded. And when you invite other people into your vision, like we're doing today with this race to 11 million meals, everything seems easier. Phone calls don't seem very hard for me right now because my vision is so big. I know that I've been given this amazing vehicle with our industry. And now I want to build it as big as I can so I can do more. And so it makes my mindset, um, I always say, the money's out there. I just got to find it. That's the mindset that I have. That's the expanded vision. When we got this million dollar number, it didn't seem very big. Sometimes a million dollars can seem big. It doesn't because I'm like, many hands are going to make light work. The money's out there. Generous people are out there. People want to help. They want to serve. They want to give. And so it expands my mind. It can't stay small or I'm not going to be able to raise any money. I have to go, whoa, God owns it all. A cattle on a thousand hills. He can absolutely help us do this. And so I, I, I'm so grateful for the abundant mindset. There's no room for scarcity when you're trying to serve others because you have to step up and step in to all that you're called to be. And that includes taking care of that mind and your self-talk. hundred percent. And you guys, here's a really practical thing. I, like, I hate to even like throw it in there, but anything you do give to is a tax donation. It's one of the, the greatest things about the business that we do. When you give that brings down your income, right? So it's a it's a tax write-off. So if you needed one more reason to make a difference outside of the mindset, outside of the giving, outside of the love, outside of sometimes you just know, you know, I've given to things that I'm like, I don't even know much about it, but I know it's the right thing to do. So I'm going to do, I mean, I don't want to say that I was ignorant, but I just didn't know much about certain things. I'm like, but I can give, I can do that. So we are really calling on your greatness today because, and we're calling on your generosity today because we have the ability, we don't even understand what it's like. I'm actually fasting today. I'm doing a 24 hour fast. I'm doing a 24 hour fast. Number one, because one of the people that we went with is Mo Boger and she's like the scientist of our group. And she's like one of the smartest human beings that I ever met. And she always talks about like why it's so good for our body to do that. But I'm like, I started to get really hungry today at 11 o'clock, really hungry today at 11 o'clock. And it just, I needed this time to pray and I needed this time to really understand you're not hungry. Like you're not hungry. And so just to even, and it could never do justice to what I saw, but the, we're talking about days. We're talking about skin on bones. We're talking about that even if they got an amazing meal, like we all have the opportunity to eat, their bodies don't even know how to digest it. They can't even digest it that a meal to them very often is a spoonful of food. And maybe that could carry them over for a couple of days. Like this, we can make a difference. And sometimes we think, well, just like Miranda thought at the beginning, what can we do? What difference is it going to make? So again, we're all about the big asks, but every little bit 
does make a difference, but it should be something that does make you uncomfortable. That Because again, that ask should make you uncomfortable. Leveling up is going to make you uncomfortable. If, if it's, I remember even giving people numbers, not into this, but I'm like, if that number doesn't scare you, it's not really big enough. Like that's one of the things that we talk about with goal setting. Like if it doesn't scare you, it's too comfortable. And so we are asking those things. We are going to put everything in the show notes. I think that's the only way to to get that link to all of you. I'm going to constantly be putting it in my stories. We do have a deadline by October 1, okay? So again, $100 or more, your name, I'm going to have the names of everybody, but you could also message me too. You can find me uh, at Debbie underscore Neil, but I'm going to be able to see all the people, but definitely message me in addition to say, add me to that coaching group, add me to the coaching group. Here's my donation. And we're going to have some fun together. If you want to do 2,500 or more and say, I want a private one. Like I want to do, I don't want you just talking to us. I want, I want to have a list of questions. I want, I have specific things. Maybe it's with your top leaders. Maybe it's with your whole team. You get to decide. Maybe you guys can raise enough that it's enough for two calls. And one of the calls are with your top leaders and one of them is with your entire organization. You can tailor that and you can communicate with me directly with that. And then you could go for that really big ask of a container and then we can work that out. But again, contact me. We could talk about it. The links are going to be in the show notes. And this is really important. And we know that we could do it. We know that we could do it. And we know that we that you have the ability to make a difference. And the reason that I really want to offer something in return than just asking for donations is because I God planted a seed in my heart. And the seed that he planted in my heart long before this came along was just developing the ability to get into the hearts and souls of as many people as I can to help you reach your God-given potential. And so if I have the opportunity to have that time with you and it's an exchange, then we all win. You're, we're, we're doing God's work all around. You're giving to make a difference to them. And then I can spend time with you so we can plant more seeds to grow more leaders, to make a difference, a, a, a bigger difference in the world. It's that constant state of evolution. It's that constant state of flow, right? If Jesus could just flow through us as a vessel and we could all be here to serve in different ways. So if that's something, look, you might be like, hey, here's a hundred bucks, but I don't really care <laughs> if I do a coaching call with you. That's fine too. I'm certainly not saying I'm the end all be all. I'm just trying to think if there's something that I could offer in exchange for your generosity, then I would be more than happy because you're here to level up. I'm here to level up. And I, I know through our love, we can make such a difference. So Miranda, do you have any last minute things that you want to share with this incredible mission of hope? Well, I just think, um, about a story early on when I went to Haiti and, you know, people have always been hungry in Haiti, but they're the hungriest they've ever been right now. They're in, they're in acute malnutrition. Um, it's called wasting away. They're literally wasting away. Their little organs are shutting down. They're eating less and less every time they can eat. And then before you know it, within hours they can go. Um, and so it's just unbelievable. But years ago there were still hungry kids and we, we would do what we could to feed them. Um, and I remember having a little bitty Ritz cracker in my backpack, four or five of them. And they were like little ones. And I saw this little girl, she had to be about two and she was sitting right next to me. And so I just took out one of my backpack and I, I um, gave it to her, just this little cracker. I said, here, you know, gave it to her. And she looked at it. She's bloated belly, distended belly, red hair. Um, instead of the little black hair they're supposed to have on the ends, it's red because it's, there's so much malnutrition. And she took that little cracker and instead of popping that thing in her mouth, like anybody would do that's hungry, I'll never forget it. She tore it into fourths. Little cracker, guys, little cracker. And she gave it to three little ones sitting around her. They hadn't seen me give her the cracker. She could have easily eaten it, but she didn't. She shared. And then the little bit that was left was just crumbs. And she licked it and she licked her fingers clean. And I remember in that moment sitting and going, she's willing to share a tiny, tiny peanut butter cracker because she knows other people around her in her same situation. But oftentimes we're not, we're not willing to share the abundance that we have or we're waiting until, until this, until that, instead of giving what we have now. And that's been a lesson I'll never forget. And so 
I just want to encourage you guys that we have so much to give and so much to share. And together, we're going to do this and make a huge difference. So thank you so much, Debbie, for letting me be on, sharing with your amazing audience. And um, it's as good as done. That's what we keep saying. It's as good as done. We're, we're believing it and um, walking towards that. So thank you. Miranda, thank you for being here. Thank you for calling on my greatness. Thank you for... I don't want to say forcing me into action, but I wasn't, I wasn't a quick yes. And because of your vision and because of your love and because you were really smart and you asked my daughter first, um, I went and by the grace of God, I was meant to be there. I feel so privileged. I feel so privileged to be with the group that we had. I feel so privileged to even see what I saw, to know that we can do so much more as a group. We could do so much more as a country. We could do so much more as individuals there. I'll never, ever, I don't want to say never, ever, because we could say we're not going to complain and we complain tomorrow, but it does give a whole new perspective on everything. And leveling up is not just about making more. The way you make more is you have to become more you have to do more. You have to give more. And giving, we know, is not just the the money. We happen to be on here right now asking for money, flat out asking for money. But you guys are professionals. You, your listeners, your learners, you know the value of growth or you would not be here. You are making a difference in the world or you would not be here. This is a very specific audience we have listening to this podcast. And I know together we can level up. Like I know I'm so excited to share all of the things that you guys do and give. I I, I know that we're going to do this. And I, I feel so grateful that you were here, Miranda, because she is an example, a true example of hope and a true example of of making a difference in the lives of these children. And together, I know that that million dollars will be raised and those containers will be brought to Haiti. And that's where we just need to pray that what what is going on in Haiti, that they're covered in prayer and that Jesus is doing his work because we know that evil will be destroyed. It's going to be in his timing. And sometimes when you go to a place like that, I have to say, like I have a really strong faith and I think the way they praise Jesus They praise Jesus in their moments of hunger, in their moments of death, starvation, like the home, the the amount of people that live in one dirt shack, the amount of, you know, people that share one toilet, not having running water, and they'll stand there and say, God is good. God is so good. And he is good. When we have more, we have a responsibility to do more. So I thank you all for being here. I love you, my Level Up family. Message me. The link is in the show notes. Please go to it. Please share it because together we can make a difference. 